Hello, I'm Amanda Calvert and uh, I'm from Fender Cats Leaders Architects. So they've told me to stand around here so that everybody can hear me. And I'm here to present today to you our Piper Residence, which is a boutique multi-residential development of 22 apartments and uh, three storeys with some basement car parking. So those are all the facts and figures. So this residential development is based in Hampton, which is a garden estate suburb in the Bayside suburbs south of Melbourne. And we can see from here its location in the red. I'll get used to this pointer. And it, how close it is to the beach here, just a short walk. And close to the train line and the train station just above here and the shops. So a really walkable suburb, but certainly a pattern of suburban suburb as well. So if we, oh, gone the wrong way. So just looking a little closer at this, our challenge with this one is that it is a suburban suburb. Predominant um, housing here are large garden estates. So single dwellings in a garden surrounded at the front and at the rear. And uh, our challenge here is that we had joined two sites and we're putting in a much larger building. So we needed to be respectful of what we had already of heritage value. You can see there's a great diversity though and that there are a few other multi-residential units etc in here that have popped up over the years. So when we came to this we have to find a way to be respectful for this diverse heritage at the same time as finding a new spirit and they encourage a contemporary type style. So we had to consider what it is that is special about these buildings. And we've got a representation of a lot of different areas. Here we've got a Californian bungalow with a little bit of Spanish mission in terms of its, its arches. We've got Federation, Edwardian, all of those different styles. And so we had to consider what is the same thread and what is special about these places. And I think what we'd come up with really is that what gives these buildings their spirit is the craftsmanship and the detailing of them on the wrong way. So we really started to consider how that was evolving and, and therefore how we could respect in our own form what this is. Now Hampton, is not a, it wasn't formal, it has an informality about it. Where Brighton has a rigour and some symmetry to it, this is more a picturesque type of development. So we had started really with that front facing being a very important front facing to get a composition of balanced asymmetry and so we played with these faces and what they might be and how they might play together uh, to give that sense of balance but not be the same and to start to offer a layering effect So what we ended up with, and I've done this very early in the thing because this is really starting from the outside and working in, and I've done that so that we can sort of see where we began with these interiors. So this layered and sculptural approach with something really individual about it to give it its own story. So the front face of the building doesn't shy away from the front of the street, but this progression between the private and public realm is very much evident, and it plays between the finer textures being part of the garden, then become part of the building, hiding away things like the garage element, drawing attention to the entry. But in behind that, that interplay of a more solid and um, universal simple approach of the horizontal line and how the two shapes interplay with their, their highlights. So that really started to inform the interiors. This is the ground floor plan of the, uh, the development. And we can see here evidence, I can't use this. You can see here the, the gardens at the front here. That sense of a private uh, courtyard at the front, but also the landscape wrapping around the building, punctuated by that ability to put a few larger trees in as well. The entrance way, which is narrow, has been made the most of by it drawing it to drawing the uh, the plan towards it and then allowing for some expansion at the end here our target market for this development was of owner occupiers downsizers who had lived in Hampton all their lives 
and uh, they were looking really for moving into an apartment building that was still set in a garden environment and still in some sense had this sense of it being a house. So the layout of them has been zoned carefully so that the communal area is in the centre and then we have private wings or private areas that extend from that. So that sense of a progression as it would be laid out in a house and this close connection that all those living spaces face out onto the garden and are offered plentiful light. The other thing about the, the layouts really was that they are quite roomy for apartment layouts. I think the smallest one is 90 square metres. But we still wanted to use that really efficiently to make sure that that space really translated into a sense of openness in the apartments. So when we look at this, we can see that we've added some subtle texture, some, some sense that it needed to be relaxing, a haven, but also to have that outlook to the garden that extended the living spaces out and gave you that sense of being grounded. We've taken cues from the outside and the way that we balance the outside with those, those are grounded and anchored elements, the ones with volume, such as two timbers, and then the soft, subtle cheeks textured, but then highlighted and balanced with the finer, smaller elements there of the special metals. In these spaces where we had that opportunity to, this is the, uh, the entrance area, where we look out to the garden there as well. And we really wanted to elicit this experience of being able to pause for a moment, to going through a transition zone where you enter your home or you leave your home, and it being a space where you could pause but you move through, but it draws your eye and we still have that familiar garden sense. And that is done through the timber, through creating a pattern of movement, but that richness and also because these timber battens, they, um, they absorb the sense of quietness in the space. This is the top floor. And the top floor really amped up the luxury, not through the finishes, but through that sense of extra daylight and it being a platform where you could see rooftop views and out to the city. But importantly, all those garden beds still very much a main feature and all of the spaces facing out into them. The clean lines and just making sure that we got those windows at the end of corridors to give you a sense of view and out, outwardness hiding away stimulating objects like the TV and giving pride a place to comforting objects like the gas fireplace. And once again, that solid, subtle texture in there that is meant to act as the start of a character, not all the character. We didn't give a white, clean box for people to fill up, but that sense that it already had a relaxing environment. The most... Um, rewarding part of being part of this project, I had seen it through to construction and then at the end I had spent the day with the photographer here taking photos in this space and um, it was a wonderful experience because it, we, we had the opportunity to see Melbourne's weather roll through over the city as we sat there but to have these comforting zones where there's a separation and many different homes within that space but this wonderful outlook, but also a sense of privacy and softness. And it does have that relaxing feel. Then the client who purchased this rang me up and said, we don't often get this, but uh, he rang me up and he wanted to know how to clean the range hood. <laughs> so we wouldn't normally need to answer that, it's in the builder's manual, but I wrote back to him and I gave him some information. And he came back to me and said how excited he was to be living here and how much he was enjoying it. And uh, I'd have to say, uh, that's why this is the best job in the world. So I think that uh, that, that really, I would leave it at that. <laughs> but uh, it's wonderful also to be able to revisit and share it with you, so.